Madam. Good evening. My name is Patty Labakan Benson. I'm a Métis Ukrainian that grew up on Treaty 6 territory, and I'm glad to be here tonight. Let's get to it. We are experiencing a crisis of overrepresentation of Aboriginal people in the Canadian criminal justice system. Since 1999, the representation of Aboriginal people in the federal prison system has doubled from 12 to 24 percent. Almost a full quarter are Aboriginal people. In Alberta, Aboriginal people make up 43% of admissions to custody. In addition, five-year trends show that Aboriginal sentences are getting longer. We also know that Aboriginal offenders make up 46% of all self-injury in our federal prisons. This tells us that the serious mental health issues of Aboriginal offenders are not being addressed in our prison system. So, Aboriginal people make up 5% of our Canadian population, 24% of the federal prison population, 46% of self-injury, but only 12% of day parole and 7% of full parole is granted to Aboriginal people. And when we talk about revocation of parole, putting people back into jail, Aboriginal men represent 25% and women represent 40% of all parole revocations. This is indeed a crisis. We know that there are two foundational reasons for this overrepresentation. The first was identified in two separate Supreme Court of Canada decisions that Aboriginal people experience significant systemic discrimination and racism, they use the R word, within the criminal justice system of Canada. Our highest courts have determined that better sentencing can reduce criminal behavior and effectively rehabilitate Aboriginal offenders. The second reason for this overrepresentation is historic trauma. In the past 10 years, I and other scholars have mapped our colonial history and drawn a straight line from the Royal Proclamation of 1763 through the colonial legislation of nation building to residential school policies, policies of forced welfare, and the mass apprehension of children by provincial governments, all the way to gang affiliation and criminal behavior. This is the intergenerational transmission of historic trauma, a topic explored in the book The Outside Circle, and indeed our gang-affiliated young Aboriginal men are metaphorically bleeding colonial legislation. And we know that when this historic trauma is not addressed, Aboriginal men and women become caught in a cycle of incarceration. In fact, the biggest predictor of incarceration for Aboriginal people is past incarceration. For some people who work in the justice system, this situation appears hopeless. In fact, the Correctional Service of Canada has responded in the last 10 years by planning to expand prisons to be ready for this growing population. Currently, the biggest investment our governments make in Aboriginal people are in the incarceration and the apprehension of children. Perhaps this money would be much better spent addressing the core issue of historic trauma. The good news is that we know what we need to do. In 1988, the Correctional Service of Canada signed a historic agreement with Native Counseling Services of Alberta to administer the Grierson Community Correctional Centre in Edmonton. It was the first time an Aboriginal organization in Canada had an opportunity to develop correctional approaches that were specific to Aboriginal offenders. So NCSA took this opportunity to look at correctional services from a new perspective and considered how this correctional centre could be operated to address criminality and promote healing. And all the Edmontonians here today know that building is right in the middle of the inner city. There are drug dealers and peep shows right across the street. Our residents could walk out of our doors and get anything they want, but they don't. NCSA has created a space where healing could begin for men who are caught in the cycle of violence, and it was renamed the Stan Daniels Healing Center. Then, in 1992, the federal government passed a beautiful piece of legislation, and it's not often you hear me say that. 
The Corrections and Community Release Act legislated for the first time human rights and dignity for prisoners and for prison staff. In addition, Section 81 of the CCRA states that the federal government can enter into an agreement with Aboriginal communities for the provision of correctional services to Aboriginal offenders. Effectively, the government opened a window for reconciliation, a space where an Aboriginal organization could enter into a meaningful relationship with the feds. It also cre created a legislative home for the work that we do. And this is what good legislation does. It creates a space for us to work together and to reconcile our colonial past. In 1999, Alan Benson, on behalf of Native Counseling Services of Alberta, and the Solicitor General of Canada, Lawrence McCauley, made the Stan Daniels Healing Centre the first Section 81 facility in Canada. So over the past 27 years, we've been in relationship with the federal government. At times, that relationship has worked very well. But has there been times we wanted to walk away? Yes. Has CSC wanted to terminate our agreement at times? Absolutely. But rather than focusing on how hard this relationship is, we focus on common ground. And this common ground is a mutual concern for public safety. For NCSA, we are working to create safe families and communities by helping men to adopt nonviolent behavior. We combine excellent community supervision with traditional restorative practices that reduce recidivism and ensure public safety. And since 1999, we've been offering the In Search of Your Warrior program, a historic trauma healing program developed at the Stan Daniels Healing Center that has been very successful. And let me be clear, this is an extremely difficult, intensive healing program. With kindness and respect, we create a safe environment where men can address their pain, grief, and loss. We explore colonization, residential schools, and family trauma, and we help men to understand their own story and their own violent behavior. Most importantly, through ceremony and the work of the elders, we help them to create a hopeful vision for their future, a positive identity as protect protectors and providers of their family. And so we believe at NCSA that ensuring public safety, building resilience, and healing are all the same process with three components. First, we need to reclaim our interconnectedness and a positive Aboriginal identity. Throw away the negative colonial assumptions and stereotypes of who Aboriginal people are. Second, we have to begin a process of reconciling our broken relationships. And third, healing is a self-determined process People have to be responsible for their own healing. We can walk beside them, we can support them, but they have to be the decision makers. And Aboriginal communities must self-determine solutions for Aboriginal issues. And we need to do that in the context of good partnerships with governments. And finally, in 2010, NCSA opened Canada's first women's Section 81 facility in Edmonton, the Buffalo Sage Wellness House. It was another historic moment. Both the Stan Daniels Healing Center and Buffalo Sage enjoy some of the lowest recidivism and reincarceration rates of any institution across Canada. And the In Search of Your Warrior program, as well as the Spirit of a Warrior program for women, are nationally recognized as two of the most effective programs at addressing historic trauma. In the past 10 years, we've added job skill development and supervised employment placements for our residents. The goal is, in to, is to ensure when our men and women are released, they have one month's rent and a damage deposit in the bank, so they are not homeless and at risk to engage in criminal behavior to survive. Like I said, we know what needs to be done. Thank you.